up, guys? Welcome. Hold on, the light is not like quite right. I feel like I'm too light. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's not still not right. Welcome back to the channel. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're having a great day. Today, I'm bringing you my album review of Pink Floyd's album. Wish you were here. This would be their ninth studio album, which was released in 1975. And of course, if you'd like, you can go back and watch and listen to my first and initial reactions and thoughts on each of the tracks here. But without further ado, let's go. Moving through themes of friendships loss, the cost of opportunity, and solemn reflection, Wish You Were Here marks a very successful progression off of the back of Dark Side of the Moon. Expanding the musical ideas here and divulging personal artifacts, we also see a refreshingly personal side of the band as they consider their current relationship while contemplating their past. Personally, Animals still remains my favorite album from the band, but Wish You Were Here is the one that I do listen to most. Beginning with Shine On You Crazy Diamond parts 1 through 5, Ambient Conversation opens up the album between Gilmore and Wright. This is what sets up a long and journeyed exposition as we rise from seismic depths and erupt to our current shores. Bluesy tides begin to echo forth very quietly, of course with concentrated drumming, each wave steadily progressing and moving the song along in its instrumental prologue. It's not until nearly nine minutes in that the first sung notes appear, and the strong question of remember when we were young. Just the opening lines are so heartfelt. The first words that are spoken on the album after such a long instrumental winding is remember when we were young. It's a powerful note to open with, not only relating to the meaning of the band and of course the relationship with Sid Barrett, but also us as listeners. It asks us to reflect and remember. Atop the layers of soulful harmonies and spirited organ, Waters cries with desperation, hope, and homage to their former bandmate. Dick Perry carries us home, courtesy of a sleek saxophone solo, before fading into the following track, Welcome to the Machine. Wright brings us into the machine with the mechanical pulses of some cold factory. The unsettling and yet hypnotic nature of the track demonstrates a certain uncanny valley that the band has always made their home in. They've always felt comfortable in this territory. Acoustic guitar begins to add a certain warm familiarity into the track amidst the kind of lifeless dark. Even the line, what did you dream? It's all right, we told you what to dream, adds a certain fateful menace, especially as there's practically no pause to allow for a response. Like, there's just something very foreboding about that. And while I love the mysterious and blissful ambience of Shine On, it's in this specific air, that I find Pink Floyd at their most interesting. Moving from the bottom floor of the machine and to the penthouse suite <laughs> at the top, Have a Cigar begins with a very seductive swing and a promise of all the pretty things. Not, not necessarily these pretty things. That absolutely funky riff further imposed with right sizzling synths immediately sticks and becomes a classic. Roy Harper actually takes the lead on the vocals here, substituting for Gilmore and Waters, who were apparently unhappy with their own takes. Harper perfectly personifies the sleazy executive who's making big promises to a fledgling band, knowing nothing about them or their music, which is of course famously shown in the line, by the way, which one's pink? We change channels and we tune into Wish You Were Here as some unknown person plays alongside the radio. It may go without mentioning, but while each track tells its own story, the transitions, both musically and narrative, contribute immensely to the enjoyment and fluidity of the album. Strumming along in some countryside, this is one of Pink Floyd's most endearing and heartfelt tracks. Both Gilmore and Waters apparently both co-wrote this one, which is apparently something that was very rarely done. Sentimental and personal, it's just one of those songs that I feel is going to move you one way or another. And then we finally move into the final parts of Shine On You Crazy Diamond with parts six through nine. <laughs> the atmosphere of the first parts return, uh, this time enlivened and enriched with just some soaring guitar cries, some gentle and bassy throbs, before gaining life in a psychedelic blues jam. It's really not long before the track returns to familiar territory, this time explored and pushed just a little further with a jazzy break, a soulful drive, and of course, and as always, filled with incredible passion. 
The ending instrumental plays with as much tenderness as it does spectacle and pageantry, even featuring a brief cameo from the song See Emily Play, which was a song that was originally written by Sid Barrett. In geological terms, a diamond is formed deep in the earth through heat and pressure and it's brought to the surface from eruptions and distress. It is the hardest natural substance. The name diamond comes from the Greek adamas, which means unalterable, unbreakable, untamed, and above all else, invincible. So how apt for the band with deep respect to refer to their friend and lost bandmate Barrett as a diamond. So those are just a couple of my thoughts on each of the tracks here on the album, but let me move into my favorite moments, my favorite lyrics, and then my song rankings for this one. So my favorite lyrics are actually taken from Shine On, You Crazy Diamond, parts one through five, and it is simply the line, you reached for the secret too soon. There is something so simply evocative and beautiful about that line, you reached for the secret too soon. I feel like I don't even have like a meaning or anything like that to say about it. There's just so much meaning behind that line. So much. My favorite moment on the album is actually going to be the intro riff to Have a Cigar. That's just a classic moment. <laughs> that's, that's just a kick you in the heels kind of moment that's going to get your head nodding, your foot kicking. You're going to move to that one, <laughs> you know? And then getting into my song rankings for the album, they are from top to bottom, from my favorites to least favorites. Uh, which there's not really like a least favorite. All the tracks are great. You know what I mean. Uh, Welcome to the Machine. Shine on you crazy diamond parts one through five. Have a cigar. Wish you were here. And shine on parts six through nine. As I mentioned, this may not be my top Pink Floyd album. I would as of right now probably put it second. But Animals is my favorite. But this is the one that I listen to most. This is a short trip into a band uh, that was at this time just on top of the world, paying deep respects to uh, their bandmate, their friend, who was not forgotten at this time. And of course, you have the story of him showing up in the studio, looking totally different, and how shocking it was to his friends to see him in that state. So it's all the stars aligned on this album, and it's a classic. What else is there to say really about it? I do hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Of course, you're more than welcome to uh, comment with your favorite thoughts or your, fa not your favorite thoughts, your favorite lyrics, your favorite moments in the album. What do you think of this one in comparison to the rest of their discography? And of course, before you leave, if you don't mind subscribing, leaving a like, uh, you can support the channel on Patreon. Uh, you've got shirts available if you're interested in that kind of thing. But I do hope that you enjoyed your time here. I hope that it was time well spent for you. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.